Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Let's start our video with a story where standing up for fairness gets twisted into something it's not. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. Woman thinks I'm being discriminating for calling her out for cutting in line. I work in a store that has a food court. People line up in one long line and wait to be called up to place their order from either me or another cashier. I've made it a habit to make eye contact and wave over the next customer because sometimes there's confusion on who's supposed to go next. There are times where people accidentally cut in front of others and I always tell them that they weren't the next person in line and to go back to wait their turn. Most of the time, the person's apologetic and apologizes to both me and the person they cut in front of. Other times they get defensive, but in the end, they go back to their spot in line. Well, today was a bit different. I was finishing up helping a customer and called for the next customer to my window. For reference, I have two windows and my register's in the middle of both windows. A man approaches my left window and a woman approaches my right window. I knew that the man was next because I saw the woman walk straight from her spot in the line to my right window. Disregarding the man who was waiting in front of the line, the woman speaks up first before I could tell her to go back in line. The following dialogue was translated from Spanish. Woman, hello, two smoothies, please. Me, I'm sorry, ma'am, but were you next? Woman, what do you mean? Of course I was next. Me, well, it seems that gentleman over there was next. Woman, I was waiting in line. A woman from the line pipes up and says, yes, she was waiting in line in front of me. It's all right. I nod my head to that woman and turn to look at the man on my left window. The man and I speak to each other in English. Man, it's all right. You can go ahead and help her first. I notice that the man was counting out his change anyway, so I go to attend to the woman. She repeats her order, this time more harshly. Me, before I start your order, I need to scan a membership card to ring you up. Woman, you need a what? Me. Your membership card, please. Woman, my goodness. Rolling her eyes, she waves over someone from outside the line, shouting at them to hurry up with the card. I check back on my left window to see if the man was done counting his change, but he isn't. Man, it's all right, go ahead and help her out. Me. Oh, I was, but I'm waiting for her to bring her membership card. Finally, a younger woman comes to the line, asking what the line cutter woman needed. Woman, she needs to see a membership card to take my order, apparently. Younger woman. Oh, okay, here it is. I finally scan their card, and as I'm scanning it, the line cutter obviously turns to the younger woman and speaks loudly so I can obviously hear. Woman, let's never come here again. It seems that the employees like to discriminate against certain customers. Me. Excuse me? Woman, you like to discriminate against people, don't you? Me. I don't understand. I asked you if you were next because I saw that you weren't. I'm not discriminating you. She waves her hand at me, just tells me her order again. I punch it in and just decide to let it go, but she decides to keep pushing my buttons. Woman, I hope she gives us good service, but she probably won't. Let's not come here again. The thing that annoyed me the most about this woman was that she wasn't looking me in the face when she said this. It's like she didn't have the balls to say it straight to me, but wanted to seem tough in front of the younger woman. I cut her off from saying anything else and ask her if that's all she wants to order. The younger woman responds for her. I walk away to put the order together and my coworker asks if I need any help. I ask her to help the kind gentleman waiting patiently in the other window while I help the line cutter woman. I then return to the window with the woman's items. Woman, next time don't discriminate against us. Me, I wasn't being discriminatory. I asked you if you were next and you weren't, yet I still attended to you. I also need a membership card from every customer, not just you. Woman, whatever, just don't do it next time. Me, you know what? Whatever. I know what I did wasn't discriminating you. There's no point in arguing with you. Next, please. She walks away from my window, but not before saying one last thing before she left. Woman, don't discriminate. Some people, man. We don't discriminate. But you know what we can do? Refuse service. You've been rude and confrontational. Please leave. Next. Things you wish you could say, but you get written up for it. And our second story. Just bought a plot of land and the neighbors are vandalizing the property. 
My husband and I just purchased a 40-acre plot of land in a rural area this month. Other than the public road leading to the area, the land is completely bordered by residential houses with smaller lots. It's zoned for agricultural use, and we plan to use it to start an agricultural business, including storing equipment and containers. The previous owner had the land for around 15 years, but didn't use it. As a result, it became a dumping ground for tires and appliances and a playground for four-wheeling enthusiasts. With our business plans in place, this kind of activity needs to stop. My husband and some friends have already started cleaning and landscaping the area. However, they've noticed that neighborhood cars and four-wheelers have been slowly passing by, almost surveilling them while they worked. To address this, my husband put up private property signs, hoping that would send a clear message. But on the third day of their efforts, two men drove onto the property and confronted my husband and his friend. They demanded proof of ownership, even though they admitted they didn't own the land themselves. Their argument was that their friend who owns the house directly behind the lot had been using the land for years. My husband refused to show them any documentation and instead advised them to check with the municipality about the land status. He made it clear that we now own the land. They left with a warning saying, we'll see about that. A few days later, when my husband returned to the property, he found the private property signs torn down and some of our small equipment tampered with and dumped in inconvenient places. It was clear that these neighbors weren't just going to give up access to land they've been using for years, even though they know they don't own it. This isn't a property line dispute. This is 40 acres of land they're trying to continue using without permission. Given that we're planning to invest tens of thousands of dollars in equipment and infrastructure for our business, we're deeply concerned about the security of our property. We live 45 minutes away, so we can't monitor the land constantly, but we want to ensure that our future business won't be harmed by these neighbors. Update. Here's what we did. We set up multiple trail cameras around the property to monitor activity. It's been crucial in keeping an eye on the land remotely. The cameras have already captured several instances of unauthorized access, providing us with clear evidence of who was coming onto our land. We replaced the torn down private property signs and added more throughout the property. The message is now loud and clear. This land is off limits. We installed a gate at the main entrance and in other accessible areas, particularly on the main trail that the neighbors had been using. This has significantly reduced the number of trespassers as the gate acts as a physical barrier. We consulted with a lawyer and after a discussion, we decided to send a formal cease and desist letter to the individuals involved in the trespassing. This legal action made it clear that any further unauthorized access would result in serious consequences. The letter combined with the evidence from the trail cameras has been effective in deterring further incidents. Since implementing these measures, the trespassing has stopped and our property is now secure. Our investment is protected and we're moving forward with our business plans without further interference. And our last story. They moved into our house. The police won't help. Last night around 8.30 p.m., a neighbor called 911 to report a fire on my mom's property. This was about 90 minutes after we left the police station where an officer had refused to take a report about squatters on the property. Two officers on patrol were the first to arrive and found four people trying to unlock the front gate from inside. They had three vehicles blocking the fire truck's path. The officers ordered them to move and somehow managed to open the gate so the fire truck could get through. They then saw three adult males attempting to climb the fence to escape and arrested them after some violence occurred. There were three more adults and several children in the vehicles. By the time firefighters arrived, the trailer was fully engulfed in flames. One of the men arrested was the same person who had sent my mom the alarming demand letter. This individual, a convicted felon with a troubling criminal history, had used the threat of legal action to extort money from my mom, claiming to be a tenant and demanding $10,000 to vacate. The police found him on the property where he was later hospitalized for assaulting an officer during the chaotic arrest. He has a long criminal record, including possession of illegal substances, extortion, battery, domestic violence, and burglary. He was renting a house less than a half a mile from my mom's property and faced eviction, which was finalized the Friday before the break-in. Here's what we pieced together. Desperate and facing eviction, the felon saw our property being cleared out and, noticing it was locked down, decided to break in with a few others. They moved in despite the property's uninhabitable condition and then tried to extort money from my mom, threatening her to either make the trailer habitable or pay a large sum. 
Last night, with no electricity, they were either cooking food or using candles, and possibly something worse, which caused the fire. They attempted to flee but forgot the key to the gate, and it seems no one on the property called in the fire. My mom had lived in an old mobile home on her own land since my dad passed away five years ago. The trailer, damaged by Hurricane Irma and needing a new roof, was finally decided to be demolished by December. She moved in with us in January, and we started removing everything from the trailer. By March 19th, we had removed all appliances and fixtures, put up hurricane shutters, and locked the doors. My husband installed battery-operated motion sensors, and we chained the front gate. Electricity and water were officially shut off the next day. On March 19th, we ensured the property was unlivable, having no means for cooking, bathroom use, or showering. On March 20th, we received a letter from someone claiming to be a tenant. The letter, dated March 20th but mailed on March 21st, demanded we turn the utilities back on or pay them $10,000 to leave. It also threatened legal action for $50,000 if we didn't comply. We went to the property and found someone had replaced our chain and padlock with their own. There were cars, a generator running, and hurricane shutters removed. We took photos and video evidence, including footage from the security camera showing the squatters breaking in. The footage showed the squatters arriving with a U-Haul, removing the chain with a blowtorch, and moving in on March 19th. At the police station, we showed the officer the demand letter, security footage, and photos. The officer told us it was a civil matter and suggested we make the property habitable or face legal costs. We were told we couldn't evict the tenants without a court order. My mom broke down in tears and we were threatened with arrest for trespassing when we insisted on speaking with the superior. We left with proof of our attempt to file a report. The next day, we planned to try the police again for a new report. The water company notified my mom that someone had attempted to open an account in her name. They didn't provide details about who made the attempt. We headed back to the police station to address the issue. In a shocking turn of events, the squatters solved the problem themselves by burning down the trailer. Thankfully, there were no serious injuries, but this created more legal issues we needed to address. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.